Hello, it's Jennifer from Sea Lemon. I am back with a new book binding tutorial, and for this binding method, I will show you how to make a buttonhole stitch. The binding involves the signatures to be stitched to the top and bottom of the spine of the book, and usually you see it with a skinny rectangle cut out on the spine. I wanted to have fun with it and try a watermelon, and this really lends itself to having fun with the binding. You can try different shapes. For more bookbinding tutorials, make sure you're subscribed to my channel, Sea Lemon. Hit that subscribe button down below or hit this annotation right here. Also, I would love to see you over on my social links. I love chatting with you guys over there, so be sure to follow me on my social stuff. All right, let's get into it. To start, I'm using 12 sheets of 8.5 by 11 inch paper, 6 pink and 6 white. For this small size book, I'm going to fold each sheet in half on the long side and run a bone folder along the edge. Then I'm going to cut each of those sheets in half to make the final page size. I'm using a paper cutter for this, but you can also use a blade and a ruler. I have a piece of tape on mine because I'm so used to cutting this size of paper, and that marks where the middle of this paper is. So I'm going to trim each of these in half to make this size of book. You can, of course, make your own size of this book. The binding works with any size of your choice. Now that all the pages are cut, stack them in groups of four to make signatures. I want the pink on the outside for the watermelon and then the white in the middle. So one signature has four folded sheets stacked together. You should then have six signatures total. Then for the cover, I'm using a piece of white cardstock, which is eight and a half by 11 inches. I'm going to measure out the spine and the front and back cover. With the signatures stacked together, place them in the middle of the cardstock and trace the width. This will be the spine of the book. Align one signature to the edge of the paper and next to the mark, and trace it on both sides of the spine so you have an overall even cover that matches the size of the signature. Now for the cutout on the spine, find where the center of the spine is and mark it. Then measure out the same amount on both sides so you can determine the length of the cutout on the spine. It's really up to you how long you want this cutout to be on your book. I'm going with six centimeters. Then score the outside marks with a bone folder and a ruler and make a little triangle to cut out. You're then going to fold this back so that it's folded on the inside of the cover and repeat this process on the other end. It really doesn't matter what shape this is, I just like to make a triangle because it's easiest. This is going to add a double layer of paper so that it's a little stronger holding the thread. From here, you can cut out the rest to make a rectangle on the spine, or you can draw a shape on both sides. I'm doing a watermelon, so I'm making a half circle. And then cut those shapes out up to the previous cutouts. You can then trim off the bottom where you marked off the bottom of the signatures so that the cover is the same height. Then with a bone folder, score the lines where the spine is so that you can fold it over to form the cover shape. Now let's mark the signatures for binding. Stack them even with the cover and mark them all at once on the spine using the edges of the cutout as a guide. Now that they are all marked evenly, pierce through those holes with an awl. If you don't have one of these, you can also use a thumbtack and make sure you stack them back into the original order that you marked them in so that your binding will end up even. After all the binding holes are made, you can then erase any marks you have on the cover that you want to get rid of. And if you're making a watermelon like I am, you can use a green marker to make a line around the cutout shape. For this binding, you will stitch the top and bottom separately. Estimate the amount of thread by counting out the number of signatures next to the binding area. This is a rough estimate, but it's better to have a little bit more than run out. To protect the thread and prevent tangles, I'm going to wax it, which makes it easier to bind with. I have a whole other video going over waxing bookbinding thread, and you can check that out in this card right here. I will also put it in the video description below. I estimated the same amount of thread for the other side of the book, and I waxed that thread as well. Now we're going to start binding one side. Single thread your needle and prepare your signatures like this, starting with one and the cover so that you can bring the next signature on and they stay in order. Start from the inside of the signature, pull through the cutout and pull it around back to the inside. Go through the same hole again and pull it so that you have a line of thread on the spine. Leave a tail on the end so that you can then tie a knot on the line of thread that you made. Tuck the end under the thread and then cut off any excess. 
Now back to the outside, bring on a new signature and go through to the inside. Loop it back around to the outside and under that stitch that you made. Then bring on a new signature and repeat that step, going through to the inside, around to the outside, underneath the previous stitch, pull through to make the line of thread, and you can straighten these lines as you go to make them more even. Then bring on a new signature and repeat that same step. Through to the inside, loop around to the outside, underneath the stitch, making the line of thread, and then you can bring on the remaining signatures in the same way. When you reach the last one, instead of going into a new signature, you're going to go back into the same hole. Pull it through to the inside, and tie a knot on that thread. Tuck the end under, and cut off the excess thread. Now you have one side complete, you're going to do the same process on the other side. Single thread your needle, and flip the book over if it's easier for you. Repeat the same steps, the only difference is that the signatures are already on there for you, so you don't need to bring on any new ones. When the binding is all done, you can then trim the edge of the book. If you want the cover and pages to have the same smooth edge, you can cut them all together with a ruler and a blade. It doesn't bother me that the middle pages slightly stick out, so I'm just going to trim the cover. Using the end signatures as a guide, trim the front and back covers. Now for the finishing touch, I need to make this into a complete watermelon with some seeds, so I'm using a black pen to make those, and adding those onto both sides of the book. And now this watermelon book is complete with a buttonhole stitch on the binding. This binding does allow the pages to lay flat, and I think this makes a really fun notebook. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Hit that like button and let me know what other DIYs or bookbinding tutorials you want to see in the comments below. And for more bookmaking projects, be sure to check out my channel Sea Lemon and subscribe so you don't miss a thing. You can check out some of my previous book related videos right here. All of these links will be in the description below. I will see you guys next time.